Hello, welcome to the session. Previously, we have uh, looked at source switch charge pump, which uh, makes us feel that okay, if there is source switch charge pump, then there is something kind of drain switch charge pump and gate switch charge pump also. So, let us look at them also one by one, whether they are good, they offer something better, uh, if they do offer better, then we should use them. So, this is like uh, in place of putting the switch at the fur top, I am going to have current at the top. Okay. So, I use these two switches. This is an ideal model of our charge pump now, up and down and you have ICP here. This is I up and this is I down. Typically, both these values of I up and I down are same. So, the charge pump which we are going to implement now that has a PMOS current source okay, with a PMOS switch and then you have NMOS switch and NMOS current source. So, if these are current sources, we know that uh, they are, have to be biased. This switch is a switch, so it was triggered at up bar. This is with down, right? And here this is VDD. This is MN0, MN1, MP0, and MP1. So, for the current source, I will again use the replica based method to decide my current source voltage, current source bias voltage, right. I can try this, uh, if this works then fine. So, I will have uh, this as a 0 which is switch size, example let us say MP1 itself and I am going to do the diode connection here and have an external current source of value whatever I want ICP. Okay. So, I do this and then once I generate the bias voltage which I get here, right? Uh, I will pass that current to another branch keeping the same replicas here and then this is connected to the switch, so connected to VDD and then you have NMOS which for which I want the bias voltage, right? I do the diode connection here and this voltage is passed as VBP and this particular voltage is passed as VBN. Let us bring the charge from little closer. Okay, so this goes to VD, goes here. So, this is our VBP and this is our VBN. These two things are VX and VY. Okay. So, in this case, uh, uh, what is going to happen when our, uh, when either of these up or down switches are on? Let us look at that. Okay, so, let us start with the case when uh, up and down both are off. So, in that case VBN, so VBP and VBN are always present, right? When up is equal, a bar is equal to 1 and down is equal to 0. At that particular time, this PMOS is off and this NMOS is also off. They do not conduct any current. ICP is equal to 0. Okay. When ICP is equal to 0, what is the value of, this is 1 by the way, right? You have VSG minus VTP for NMOS, for PMOS greater than 0 and VGS minus VTN for NMOS also greater than 0. So, when these two things are there, right, in this case, what happens is that V by potential will be pulled to VDD because there is no current going through this transistor MP1. 
So, the only way is you do not supply any current. So, V y gets pulled to V d d such that V s t is equal to 0 for V mos and similarly V x potential gets to 0. So, in of state your current sources m p 0 and m n 0 are in linear region of operation. Okay. And when any of this MOSFET turns on, whether your MP1 turns on or your MN1 turns on, what it is going to do if MP1 turns on, then okay. So, let us say if your MN, your MP1 turns on, then what is going to happen is that uh, First, your VDD potential should drop to a value. VDD potential, this V by potential drops from VDD to a low value such that your MP0 goes into from linear region of operation to saturation region. So, MP0 switches or transition transitions from linear region to saturation region. Okay. So, current source is uh, not active as soon as your M P 1 transitions. Okay. So, there is some transition delay uh, when the current source will uh, become fully active and it will start uh, uh, giving the current as we want. Okay. So, there is some kind of current variation well that will anyways be there, but there is a delay associated with this transition of the current source from linear region to saturation region and similarly think uh, similar thing will happen with M n 1 also M sorry M n 0. Okay. So, this is one of the problems you can say as compared to the source switched charge pump because uh, there the current source always remains in saturation right so there is no transition uh, delay going from linear region of operation to uh, saturation uh, region okay here first your v by node has to drop from vdd similarly vx node has to go uh, has to get charged to the desired potential then only uh, it will work like a current source which we want now other things uh, which we have here is that uh, the switches which you are having. Now, if I keep both the switches like in this case, uh, your up bar signal at max is 0 and this signal is at max is VDD. Right? Now, to keep the current source in saturation region, you need a certain voltage and for the switches, you would like to keep a minimum voltage. Uh, between the switches. So, if that is the case across the switches minimum voltage. So, if that is the case then what happens is that your V by voltage right is actually limited by the gate overdrive of the PMOS transistor. So, you can say V x and V y is limited by gate overdrive of current sources. Okay. Now, if they are limited by the, if uh, V x and V y is limited by the gate overdrive of the current sources, which is actually you can say V g s minus V t n for n mos and uh, V s g minus mod V t p for p mos right is limited by this. This in turn increases size of your switches. Earlier you were having the gate overdrive for the switches as the maximum allowed in a given process. 
right? Because the source was pulled to VDD for PMOS and for NMOS it was pulled down to 0. That is why you had the maximum say maximum overdrive. When you had maximum overdrive, then the possibility of using a smaller size is more uh, okay, uh, as compared to the case when you have a limited uh, overdrive. Okay. You cannot make this voltage 0, it cannot be this uh, voltage, you cannot make this to negative. Okay. If you think that I can make this 0 to negative uh, value, it is not possible in a given case. Similarly, your MN1 gate voltage, you cannot increase more than VDD uh, in a given process. So, with these two limitations, it automatically increases the switch size. When switch size increases, then other problem comes that you have the capacitance connected from gate to drain and when you have transitions from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 on these gate switch nodes, similarly on this side. So, these transitions now directly couple to the output. Previously, that coupling was coming through the current source. Now, this coupling is directly to the V control node and the clock feed through uh, effect is. So, you can say increased clock feed through. Okay. So, uh, looking at it, uh, the good or bad part about it is that, uh, by the way, so the way we are looking at us, we are only seeing the bad part about this drain switch charge pump. Uh, the bad part is that uh, in off state, you have the current sources in linear region, they make a transition from linear to saturation when you turn on, which creates the transition delays. Uh, second thing is that your switch sizes automatically increases because they are operating with a lesser gate overdrive. Now, if they have a lesser gate overdrive, if they have a larger switch size, you have increased clock feed through. Okay? And then uh, uh, with every, uh, when you have increased clock feed through, you have increased ripple at the output. Okay? So, this is something which uh, you would not like to use. Uh, right, if uh, all these things are uh, uh, problematic, maybe in some case, uh, it is like uh, in some cases you may like to use uh, uh, PMOS as uh, because in this case you think that okay, this is operating as a uh, current source, right? And if you have some current source biasing like this, you may try to use it, but you will face all these problems, okay? So, yeah, that is about the drain switch charge pump. Uh, thank you. In, in the next section, we will look at the gate switch charge pump.